All right, what's poppin' people? We're back after a couple of weeks. <laughs> Fun fact, I actually have recorded another video that just hasn't been uploaded yet, in which I again say, we're back after a break. <laughs> but because this one's probably gonna go up before that one, I'm gonna just say that here as well, question mark. Anyhow, sometimes you just need a break. And so I took a break. I think that one's pretty self-explanatory. Anyhow, we're here today to talk about the results of the NDD suspect test, and, uh, you know, sometimes we miss. <laughs> Obviously, when I make these videos introducing a suspect test and why I think a certain way, there is a lot of theory bond that goes into that, and how a Pokemon plays out in practice is sometimes a little bit different. And if you do pay attention to the NDD sub forum, which you should, by the way, Hang out with us, participate in projects, make metagame related posts. I think it's really fun to engage with the community in that way. But as for the sus subject at hand, NDD did stay banned. And it was pretty convincingly too, it was like 75 or 80% ban. Which is kind of crazy given the amount of people that wanted NDD tested. Like, it was hugely in favor. Over 50% of, the, I believe it was, the survey app response said, yes, test NDD and have it be the first thing you suspect test out of literally anything that you could. So to then see it get so staunchly opposed in the actual voting to an unban was kind of crazy. But there's a good reason for that. So I, I want us to return to this. I don't know if this is the exact sets that I had displayed at the time in terms of the move sets, but Scarf and Specs NDD were definitely these sets posed as probably what NDD would run, right? So comparatively to NDD Female, NDD Male is a little faster, meaning you get the jump on Scarf Road and Mo, you avoid speed ties with the other base 85s, and now actually force speed ties with the 95s. You're looking at like Drapion and Sil Valley Ground for that. And so it could allow you to do some stuff with natures as well. So if you're looking at like this, you could do modest if you really wanted to. It would put you again below Rotomo. But it would give you a nice power increase while still keeping a lot of your speed. You'd still have the jump on Choice Scarf Passimian, and then of course you're still slower than Choice Scarf Togedemaru. Which isn't a very common Pokemon at all, but I guess it's somewhat relevant here. So that gave you a little bit of flexibility here. And then of course Specs, it's the same deal. You could go Modest, but if you look at Damage Calyx, Modest is pretty unnecessary. And I think that's a big thing where NDD Mail did end up differentiating itself from its female counterpart. Female entity needs modest for that power output. It is, again, we talk about how like a lot of Pokemon in that base, like 70 speed to 85 speed do end up just running a neutral nature for the power anyway. But entity female really does end up needing it for some 2-hit KOs. I believe versus like Vaporeon, for instance, you don't 2-hit KO unless you go, um, Modest, I want to confirm that though real quick, so let's see it. Um, we'll even just do the 40 Spadef set. No, you do. Wait, what's the mod I'm thinking of? I know there's a Pokemon that you have to run that for. Um, AV Raj, is it that? We'll even say no special defense. Yes. Okay, so this is a, one of the big examples. Without hazard support, you need Modest to guarantee it to a KO on Copper Raja. I'll even put Shadow Ball here so we can look at, like, Bronzong. Um, this isn't the standard set. We'll put the 168. That's what they will run. Modest as well guarantees you. Doesn't guarantee, but gives you incredible odds to become Bronzong. Okay, so there you go. There are your examples. If you look at Indie Mail, though, I believe we should see a lot different. Um, that's the wrong move. Shadow Ball. Yeah, so a little bit lower, of course, but into the mail gets a lot of these same damage benchmarks on specs without having to dedicate to less speed. So you're not making that sacrifice there out of it. And so that definitely complicates things because there's just a decent amount fewer Pokemon 
that can at least, you know, threaten a tie or outspeed it outright and then chunk it. Rotomo being the big one. And then I think also something that <laughs> uh, something that I didn't expect, which I probably should have, but something that did end up popping up was uh, people went looked at this item and they said, "Damn, that's cool and all. What if I went with this? This is the right one, right? No, that's the wrong one. Um, what's the item here that I'm thinking of? Wise glasses. Yeah. What if I picked the other pair of glasses?" <laughs> So people ran, like, Wise Glasses, they ran Life Orb. Obviously, Choice Specs could have run Trick, but also these other options really enabled a last coverage move in Shadow Ball, usually, to pop up. Allowing you super effective coverage for Bronzong, and as we've seen, um, yeah, you took KO that with Shadow Ball with rocks all the time. Unless they're, like, full specially defensive. Yeah, it's not taking a hit. And that was the big thing that made complicated the gameplay here. At least with the Diddy female, you know it's choice locked, or it probably is. Again, we you look at the power um, drop off, even with modest, you know, you're still kind, you're missing out just a bit on some guaranteed K to a KOs. Yeah, I guess really not. It's really versus like Copper Raja. But again, you see modest really always being defaulted to, and they're always basically choice locked because they want that extra power really badly. If you go with these other options, the damage fall off ends up being a lot more notable. Whereas with Entity Mail, it, it, it doesn't really. So you can get away with these other item options. You get away with swapping moves. And it no longer is a case where someone has, say, a Vaporeon out. Um, I don't know, so you get the two Pokemon in at the same time. You don't get to just protect versus the Entity Mail and guarantee a safe swap. Because it could be Life Orb. It could be Wise Glasses. We even see... We saw a little bit of this, not a whole lot, but Combine did pop up a little bit. And while it's not overly necessary to break, it did allow this a little bit more flexibility. Again, a lot of this could just be traced back to the speed advantage, guaranteeing that you're faster than those base 85s, guaranteeing you're faster than non-choice Scarf Rotom Mo is pretty big. And it even speed tying's like Drapion and Valley Ground. That is still helpful. With Entity Female, those two guaranteed outspeed it because they're really never scarfed. Their scarfs, they're, they're basically always specs, I would say. In my experience, I see specs a lot more. So those bonds always are fine to outspeed it and threaten to kill it with multi-attack or knockoff. Entity Mail, ha ha ha, fun playing the speed tie game. And while Drapion's not threatened by really any move it could go for, because Hyper Voice really was kind of hard to fit, you ended up really wanting the coverage for Steel types and Dark types, like, across the board. Like, Gleam to Pop Guzzlord was just more practical than H Voice for neutral damage on Drapion. You know, it's, it's not like you want to take too many, it's not like you really want to take Dazzling Gleam more than once. <laughs> the Mon does damage. And so, it's not a safe revenge kill opportunity here, you know? And I would say that's really where it... I think it's this right here that ended up being the big determining factor. A couple... Well, this is part of it. There are some other things too. But I think being able to opt for these other damage boosting items a lot more reliably than Indity Female can... And also just the speed giving it just a couple more Pokemon that don't safely revenge kill it anymore. Those two factors really contributed to people looking at it and going, yeah, no, that's too much. Something else I think may also have played into this is just looking at Inu as a whole and maybe saying, hey, do we really need another breaker that requires really specific defensive counterplay to beat? Because it's not like Inu can't handle this Pokemon. We have plenty of other breakers that are very comparable to it. You know, if you're thinking about, I mean, hell, again, Entity Female is at least comparable, just a little bit worse. Exploud, slower, sure, but it also has the funny nuke button. Tyrantrum, same deal, more, I'd say a little bit more defensive utility. We have lots of Pokemon like that. And so it's, you know, could you defensively keep up with this? Sure. And it's not to say this Pokemon doesn't have actual shortcomings, too. I think the biggest point against Indity Mail 
staying banned was probably the difficulty with which getting it the difficulty in getting it in this mon is not bulky 60 55 95 is really bad and so finding chances to actually come in and break is quite hard and this is something that i've noticed when using female entity too is that it's just so hard to get this mon in and start safely breaking with it and that mod's the bulkier one too right like <laughs> Not by much. You're looking at, aha, 70, 65, 105. Yeah! You know, it's not like a huge difference. Maybe you come in on a Scald a little bit more easily, but... The fact of the matter remains, this mod is one that requires an insane amount of support to actually get in and break. And I do think that that is a pretty valid point in defense of you know, maybe freeing it if you were one of the people voting to free it. Doesn't matter how good a breaker you are, if you can't get in and Oko, what's coming in? You know, think about like Deoxys attack or whatever. Yeah, that mod ain't coming in very easily, but it doesn't matter. It's going to KO whatever you have in front of it. But if you can't do that, which this mod did have enough mods that it couldn't outright Oko or was just too slow to threaten, then well, look, you just wasted your turn. And so... I think that would be the main point against it being too broken. Proactive play limited it really severely. And if you're looking at, you know, these scarf sets, sure. Trick was annoying for some defensive mons. And you could, again, you can note Shadow Ball here just to hit Bronzong for respectable chip. But if you keep getting doubled on, and you can't get, like, those safe pivots into it, then, like, what? Well, it doesn't matter if you've got this nuclear breaker on your team. It's just gonna end up being that you play the game 5v6. And that is a point I think that always comes up in these debates about banning wall breakers. How easily does the mon get to break? So if you look at just maybe some of the mons PU is banned, I don't play PU very frequently, but there's always going to be the decision between, like if you look at all the mons they've broken, most, a lot of these are breakers, Clawwitzer, Drampa, Duraladon. Lola Negi, NDD, Kingler, Machamp, I, I guess for his, I don't know what this one constitutes. Bro, it's attack stats are 90, I can't call this a wall breaker, I feel like I'm trolling. But a huge part of that debate always ends up being, how easily can I get this mon in? There are like two parts, how easily can I get it in? And how good is it once it is in? Like, do I just kill something pretty easily every time I'm in. Like, are the 50-50s, or I guess I'll just say the turns, weighted so heavily in my favor that it doesn't matter? I think something with Drampa that you would look at is it's pretty good at getting itself in because it's typing. Allots it a decent amount of chances to come in. You can even throw in Sap Sipper there if you wanted to. It's like extra defensive utility. And when it gets in, it's like, yeah, have fun playing the coverage game. Uh, <laughs> Hyper Voice Drake or Flamethrower, which one do you want to catch? Same thing with, like, Duraladon, right? Another mon that, at least on some side of the defensive spectrum, <laughs> it's got a good chance of coming in versus some random mon you've got. And then you're staring down a mon with really, really, really good coverage that you now have to figure out, okay, um, how do I pivot around it? And there are obviously other traits that come to these Pokemon too, right? Drampa could do other stuff than just break. Duraladon can do other stuff than just break. If you look at in you top tier breakers as well. A lot of the time they're top tier breakers because they aren't limited to just wall breaking. You know, if I'm thinking about Copper Raja, which I mean, I guess not a top tier mon anymore, but when it was at its peak, Assault Vest Copper Raja was not only one of the best breakers, but it was also a really solid standalone defensive Pokemon that had great synergy with Vaporeon and Sylveon as wish passers. If I look at Dragalge, not only is it a really good breaker, but it checks an awful lot defensively, it provides pivot support, toxic spikes can be really good in certain matchups, because, you know, there's not always a grounded poison on the other team. There's more than it does, and that's usually what ends up separating the really good breakers from the, just like, fine wall breakers. You know, you look at Explode, for instance, it's an insane breaker in terms of just offensive potency. Boom Burst is one of the easiest moves to just use repeatedly. Explode doesn't really do anything else, though. Like, that bulk is kind of nefarious. Kind of misleading, you know? You look at 104 HP, 
And you're like, damn, that's really good. In practice, though, like... I feel like Explod's a bond that'll live any one hit. It's, like, weirdly bulky, but it's also weirdly frail. It doesn't do a whole lot, though, other than break. You know? I'm not looking at Explod and having to run through several different scenarios in my head of what this Explod could do this game. No, it's clicking Boom Burst 50 times every time it gets in, and I just have to limit its chances to get in. But versus, like, a Dragalge, it's not as simple as just limit its chances of getting in, um deny it from breaking because it could it could flip turn it could support its team through means other than just wall breaking and with Ndidi we were looking basically at maybe a case more along the lines of Explode I guess except ramped up further yes Ndidi was basically just a wall breaker and nothing more nothing nothing more nothing less but because of its really good speed because of the ease with which it basically to it KO'd whatever wanted to come in unless you predicted properly on it every turn, people ended up saying, hey, let's not add another one of these to the tier. Because, you know, admittedly, NU has plenty of click-click Pokemon. <laughs> I'm not too sure we gain a whole lot by adding, you know, a tenth. And I hope y'all enjoyed this. Now, I guess something worth shortly talking about is <laughs> Tornadus did get a lot of support to get a suspect after Ndidi. I don't know if that's gonna happen. Ndidi got convincingly voted to stay out of the tier. You I really don't see a world which Tornadus doesn't get even more convincingly voted against. I will always say I'm still open to the Mon being tested because it doesn't actually affect anything. Yes, it makes the ladder a little bit more annoying for a couple of weeks, but who cares, man? It's the ladder. You play ladder to have fun. It's not a tournament. It has no bearing on official games. I mean, look, we could t suspect test literally everything on that list. And as much as I may disagree with the prospect of most of those Pokemon that we surveyed being balanced, I don't really care if we test them. <laughs> May as well. <laughs> Anyhow, I hope you all enjoyed this. Of course, if you did, let me know what you enjoyed the most down below. And thank you for sticking around. I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.